Last week, we saw that in supervised machine learning, we are given some training data. We are given X and Y. We learn something from this training data. Then given a new unseen example, we predict the target of this new example. In case of decision trees, we did this by asking a series of questions on features and some thresholds on feature values. Another intuitive way to do this is by using the notion of analogy. For example, suppose you are given a bunch of images and their labels. So our X is pictures and our Y is names associated with these pictures. Then we are given a new unseen test example, a picture. And we want to find out the label or the name for that picture. An intuitive way to do this is by finding the most similar picture in our training data. And then using the label of that most similar picture as the label for this new picture. You can imagine this idea being used in facial recognition systems and recommendation systems. For example, you can imagine having a bunch of faces on your watch list. And a new face comes up and you want to check whether that new face is on your watch list or not. Another example is recommendation systems. In recommendation systems, you usually want to find out similar users or similar items. We are not actually going to look at these applications at this point, but I wanted to mention them because they are the most relevant applications for analogy-based algorithms. Now, before we look into the details, I want to give you a general idea of one of the most popular analogy-based algorithms called k-nearest neighbors, so that you have a general idea of where we are going with this. And here is the idea. So first I'm creating some data set and here is how our data set looks like. These orange points are the points with class one and blue points are the points with class zero. And we have these three test points. Remember that in supervised machine learning, our goal is to predict target of new unseen examples. So these are our new unseen examples. And the question is how do we predict targets of these new unseen examples. So here is the general idea of k-nearest neighbors classifier. Given a new data point, we look at the data point in the training data that's most similar to this new data point. And we use the class of this data point from the training data as the class of new data point. Let's look at an example. Now in our data set, these three green stars are our test examples. So what we do is for each of these test examples, we look at the nearest data point in our training data. So for this particular green star, this nearest data point is this blue circle. And the class of this blue circle is class zero. So we assign that class to this particular green star. On the other hand, for this other green star, the closest data point is this orange triangle and the class of this orange triangle is class one. And so we assign class one to this particular green star. Now we don't have to stick to just one neighbor. We can use information from more neighbors. So if we use three neighbors instead of just one neighbor, what we do is we look at three neighbors of a given test example. So for this particular green star, we will look at three closest neighbors. And these are the three closest neighbors. And we take vote of these three neighbors. And that's the class of our green star. So that's the general idea. So our goal is to come up with some way to find similarity or distance between two examples. 
so that we can find nearest neighbors of a given example. For that, let's look at some terminology. To understand analogy-based algorithms, it's useful to think of data as points in a high dimensional space. So given X, each feature in your X is a dimension. And each example is a point in this d-dimensional space. For example, in our cities data, in our Canada, USA cities data, we have two features, latitude and longitude. And each example is a point in this two-dimensional space. So uh, here on the x-axis, I have longitude and on the y-axis, I have latitude. And these are our points in this plane. In the Spotify data set that you used in lab one, after removing these text features, we had 13 different features. So here we have 13 dimensions. Our data is 13 dimensional data and each example will be a point in this 13 dimensional space. In machine learning, we usually deal with high dimensional problems. For example, if D, that is number of dimensions is around 20, then it's considered as a low dimensional problem. If it is around 1000, then it is medium dimensional problem. And if it is around 100,000, then it is high dimensional problem. And it's not very hard to think of problems where the dimensions are, say, around 100,000. For instance, if you are dealing with images, then each feature would be a pixel in your image. Or think about Gmail's spam identification system. In that system, each feature would be a word from all emails that Gmail has. And so you can imagine that it will, it would definitely be around 100,000, if not more than that. Feature vector is a vector composed of feature values associated with an example. Here I'm showing you a couple of examples of feature vectors. The first one is from our cities data set. These are just values for two features. So this is a feature vector from our cities data set. Here I'm showing you a feature vector from our Spotify data set, which has 13 different values. Okay, now how do we calculate similarity between examples? Now let's take two points from our cities data set. I have sampled two points from the data set and these are our two points. So this is our training data and our two sampled points are shown with these two big black circles. What we want to find out is how similar these two points are. Now, one way to calculate similarity between points in a high dimensional space is by calculating the distance between them. Higher distance means points are less similar and smaller distance or lower distance means the points are more similar. Now, a common way to calculate distance between two feature vectors or vectors is by calculating the Euclidean distance. Here I'm showing you the formula to calculate Euclidean distance between two feature vectors U and V. And what does it say? So the Euclidean distance between these two feature vectors can be calculated as the square root of the summation of the squared element wise differences between these two vectors. What does that mean? Let's look at an example. So these are our two cities. Now first I'm subtracting two cities here. Then I'm squaring uh, the sum of the difference. Okay. And finally, I'm taking the square root. So these are the three important steps in calculating Euclidean distance. First, you have to do element wise subtraction and take square of that. You add them up and finally you take square root of that and that gives you 
uh, Euclidean distance between these two feature vectors u and v. Now instead of doing all these things ourselves, we can also use scikit-learn's function called Euclidean distances. So let's try that out. And this is what it gives us. We have these two cities and uh, when we call Euclidean distances on two cities, then this is what we get. We get these four numbers. Now this first number is the distance of this first point to itself. So it's going to be zero. Then this fourth number is the distance from this second point to itself, which is again going to be zero. This number is the distance of this first point to the second point. And this number is the distance from this second point to the first point. And if we compare these numbers with what we calculated before, they are the same numbers, 9.0305. Now in case of Euclidean distance, the distance between two points is symmetric. What does that mean? It means that if you calculate distance from point A to point B, it's going to be the same as the distance from point B to point A. But it doesn't have to be the case if you are using other matrix to calculate this distance. Now before we were passing two cities to Euclidean distances, we were using Euclidean distances to calculate distance between these two cities. What if we pass all cities to Euclidean distances? So let's try this. When we pass all cities to Euclidean distances, we get distances from all cities to all other cities in our data set. So for each city or each row in our cities data set, we will get distances from that city to all other cities in our data set. Now I'm replacing these diagonal entries with infinity here. And a question for you is to think about why I might be doing it. Now let's consider this particular city, city zero, and let's look at the distances between city zero and some other cities. So this is our city zero. These are longitude and latitude values for city zero. And these are the distances from city zero to the first five cities in our data set. Now we have this information about the distances from city zero to all other cities in our data set. And from that information, we can figure out the closest city to city zero. So basically we look at all these distances, we pick the distance with smallest value, and we look at the index of that corresponding distance. We look at the city of that corresponding distance. And we can do that using this argmin function of NumPy. And that's what I'm doing here. So in our case, the closest city from city zero is the city 81, the city with index 81. And if you look at longitude and latitude information of this city 81, you will see that they are very, very close to longitude and latitude values of city zero. So this makes sense. In our case, the closest city to city zero is the city with index 81. So far, we were calculating distances between training data points, but we can also calculate distance between a new data point or a query point to all points in the training data. Suppose we are given this new query point. Someone gives us new values for latitude and longitude, and we want to find the closest city from our training data to this query city, this new data point. So let's try that. So here I'm passing this X cities is our training data and this new query point to Euclidean distances. I'm passing these two arguments. And with that, now I'm getting a list of distances. So what it's going to do now, it's going to calculate distance from this query point to all points in the training data. And we get a list of distances. And with that information now, we can figure out 
the closest city to this query point. And in our case, the closest city uh, is the city with index 72 and the distance or the Euclidean distance between them is 0 0.7982. So that's one of the simplest way to calculate distances and similarities between points. In the next video, we will talk about k-nearest neighbors algorithm.